Well, folks, we are fishing one of my favorite styles today, the pellet waggler. It's a brilliant method, catches some fantastic fish. We are here at Hackett's Lakes in Not Nottinghamshire, very close to Home Pier Point, very famous venue of the past. And this place never lets us down. Some beautiful fishing here. And even though we've had quite a lot of rain recently, and the water's very cold, it looks like the fish are still pretty obliging. So this is our first fish. We've been fishing for maybe 20 minutes. Obviously with a pellet waggler session, quite often you have to build up the swim. You have to constantly feed the bait. And I'll talk about the feeding patterns and the kit once we get this fish in, but we've fed the swim. It's probably taken us, like I say, 20, 25 minutes before we started getting some indications. Oh, he's a beauty. Nice, big, long common. And this fish absolutely tore off bite as soon as the pellet landed on the surface and tried to pull the rod out of my hand. I'm beginning to think we've probably not got the right size landing net head on for these big fish. Hopefully we'll shuffle him in because he is a beauty. I never like to bully, especially the first fish of the day. I always like to make sure that that first fish ends up in the net. And as I'll touch on, when we talk about the kit, we're not on exceptionally heavy gear. These fish are getting fished for all the time. You know, it's a, it's a Monday morning and on this lake, there's probably 15 anglers on this lake on a Monday morning. So you can only guess how many anglers are here on a weekend, all trying to fool these fish throughout the year. So. You can't fish too heavy for these fish, otherwise they've, they've seen it all before and they'll just shy away from the bait. Nice soft rod. Small hook, light line. I always think that's the way to go. Keep the rod nice and low. Let's see if we can get him this time. It's ever so shallow close in here, so I always find when the, the water's shallow close in, the fish just when you're playing them, they want to hang around just out of netting range. They don't really want to come into that shallow water. I mean, don't get me wrong, if we start catching loads and loads of fish, we'll probably fish a little bit heavier and we can maybe boss the fish a little bit more. But I think you've just got to take your time and make sure every fish ends up in the net. I just spoke to the, the bailiff as we, we drove onto the, onto the lake and he told me that 80 pound won the match yesterday. And looking at, the, <laughs> looking at the size of this fish, that's not many fish because this is a, this is a double figure fish, this is. So you look at it in real terms and that's eight fish during the day. It's well worth making sure each one ends up in the net. Cool, there we go. He's in there. Just about fits in the net, folks. Look at that. Right, beautiful common carp. We're gonna hold him up. I'm not bothering putting these fish in a net today because I just never feel that on these filming sessions or a pleasure session, unless we really need to, I think these big fish, get them straight back. So come in here, I'll show you the situation that we've got because this is why I like to use quite light lines and, and smaller hooks. Look at that fish, hook just outside the mouth. That tells me that if I'd have got a really big hook on with 
heavy line. I just think that fish, he's not taking the bait confidently at all. You can see there, even with this small hook and light line, he's not took the bait confidently. He's sort of had a snatch at it. So I think we're about right with the setup. Let's hold him up. Oh, he's heavy. Let me tell you, he is heavy. Look at that for a beauty. That's a beautiful fish. What a cracking fish, right. Every bit of, I'm gonna say 10 pound, he is. Eight more of them and we've won the match if we're going on yesterday's result. There we go, mate. Right, let's talk about the setup and the strategy because you can see it's worked. I've used this sort of tactic loads up and down the country, different venues. If you've got a venue that have got, that's got a lot of carp in it, open water, it's gonna work. So, set up first. I've got my reel, which is an Akuma Seymour. This is a HD version. And it is, it's got a fast, um, it's got a fast ratio. I like a fast ratio on a reel. It means that when I turn the handle, it's, the float is coming back to me a lot faster. For float fishing, I think that's really important. Feeder fishing, it's the opposite way around. You need a bit of power there, so a slower geared down ratio. But for float fishing, because I'm in and out all the time being super busy, if I can maybe reel in, I don't know, five, six seconds faster, every single cast, it's gonna make a difference. I could probably get 10 or so casts over the course of five hours extra, more than my neighbor. It's those small margins, remember, that we're always looking for in match fishing. I've loaded the reel, that's 018 mainline. So not super heavy, 018, probably breaks at around six pounds, something like that. But 018, a lot of people, they would think about using 022 or 024 mainline. For casting lighter floats, especially if you've got any wind on the water, heavier mainline, it's just a nightmare. You can't do it. So a nice light mainline. Also, you can see there, filled it right up to the brim of the spool. I want to make sure that line peels off that spool beautifully. So you can see there, by filling it up right to the brim, we've made sure that that line peels off, makes casting those light floats really easy. Right, let's go down to the float. One of my favorite pellet wagglers, and I'm not too sure it is even a pellet waggler. It's a nice, thick, clear plastic waggler. This is called a midi fat boy. I've used these for years. The weight at the base is so sort of, it's, it's, it's so dense and close to the float that it flies like a dart. Sometimes if you've got a spigot at the bottom of the weight or you're using snap links and all that sort of thing, the float can dart off course. And that is one of the reasons that once I've chose my right, the right float for the day, I like to just put it straight on the main line. I don't want anything below the float because anything below the float or below that weight is going to cause it to, to kink and dart off course. I want that float to, to fly arrow straight, land exactly where I want it. Really simple rig. I've got a slot shot above the float. I've got maybe eight or 10 inches sliding. I, use that ni I like that nice gap. Quite often these fish are just going to literally rip the rod out of our hands and I like that nice gap for whatever reason it seems to work whether it's the fish feeling the pressure against the float or whether it just gives that extra 10 inches of slower fall I don't know but it works really well we've got two slot shot below the float just to stop the float obviously falling off the line and then we've twizzled our main line we've tied a twizzled loop and that is attached to our hook length our hook length is 016. So we're catching double figure fish here on 016 hook length. Now again, a lot of people did want to use 018 minimum, I'm guessing. But like I say, these fish, they've been caught so many times before, all summer, at the back end of summer now. Imagine how many times these fish have seen a hook bait. We need to fool them. So 016, starting there with about two and a half feet, plus that twizzled boom, plus the float, probably fishing about three foot deep to start with, which I think is a great starting point for pellet waggler. The hook, tiny little hook, it's a size 18, and you've got the bait band there, obviously tied knotless knot, bait band there, really close to the base of the hook. When these fish take the bait in, I want them to take the hook in. I don't want that bait band a long way away because they risk taking the bait in and the hook still being outside the fish's mouth. Now, hook bait, I'll just put them in the band for you. There's been a little six mil. And these are the tiger nut pellets. These are the monster tiger nut. I'm using a six mil 
in the band and I'm feeding the eight mils. Good reason for that. I want the noise of the eight mils, but I want the hooking capabilities of that six mil pellet. I always feel that a fish takes a smaller bait far more confidently than it would a bigger bait. And by feeding the bigger baits, I'm almost giving the fish something better with the hook bait. So plop, plop, plop on the water with those eight mils. I can group them nice and tightly. And then one of these six mils in the bait band. And, and that's worked so many times for me, actually fishing a smaller hook bait than you're feeding, which is, it goes against what a lot of people seem to think and what you'd you know, automatically go to. But a smaller hook bait and feed a bigger hook bait, it's caught me so many fish over the years. Right, I've got an area at about 25 meters that I've been feeding. And like I said, I've been feeding it now for 25, 30 minutes, something like that. I've not gone mad, literally two pellets every time. So I'm feeding, you're gonna come in there, look. Two pellets every time. That's going on the water, that's going out there. Two pellets is really important. I don't wanna feed a load of bait. If I feed loads of bait, those fish that physically can't get at it before it sinks below that depth, that critical depth of three foot. I know if I'm feeding two pellets, there's a really good chance that they're gonna eat those pellets and intercept that bait before it gets below that three foot depth that I'm presenting my hook bait at. That's one of the reasons. I wanna keep those fish up in the water. By doing it all the time, I'm doing, by feeding that bait all the time, I'm keeping those fish up in the water. The other reason is two pellets in that pouch, they fire out so much more accurately than a big patch full of pellets. I can get them further, and they sit together as they go through the air and they land almost like within a meter of each other, which I think at 25 meters, that's all you can ask for. So I'm trying to be as accurate as I can. And although that fish took me on a bit of a merry dance and I had to let it go, what I like to do is I like to clip up when I'm pellet waggler fishing. It means that I'm casting exactly the same place every single time. So. We've had to take the clip off because obviously that fish took us out there. But literally at the limit of where I can cast that waggler, I'm going to slip the line under the line clip. And that does two things for me. It keeps me accurate. And also, if I hit that line clip every time, it's straightening my rig out every time in exactly the same place. What I don't want is my float to land in a massive heap I want everything to be separated. So the pellets will land as far away from that float as possible. So there, hits the line clip. When it's hit the clip, I can pick up two pellets, plop it over the top, maybe a quick twitch of the, of the float, half a reel turn, and repeat the process. It's literally that fast. Then obviously, as you're going through the day, alter your feeding strategies, maybe alter your depths. That's when your angling brain comes into it. Hopefully, you can see from that fish I just caught, all those little tips, they do work. So next time you're faced with a nice warm day, big open water commercial, have a go on the pellet waggler.